Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. In this short video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use radio buttons within Oracle ADF. In this particular example, we're going to use a component called the Select One Radio, and we'll do something simple like create a static list for gender. It's either going to be male or female. So what I'm going to do first of all is right-click on my web content, going to say new and we're going to create a new JSF page and I'm going to call this customer and then hit OK. Now just to make this look nice I'm going to take a panel header this is under the layout section of our ADF faces under our component palette so we just drag that over there and we'll give this a nice heading we'll call this customer Okay, so once you do that, let's go ahead and look at our components. Okay, so I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Here's our select one radio. Let's see, where is it? Here we go. Select one radio right here, and we're just going to drag it onto here. Now, of course, we could uh, drag other components on there, and we're going to do that in just a minute. Now, since we're dealing with a very short static list, it's either going to be male or female, the easiest way to do this is to create a list and just add the items right here. So I'm going to have one with a label of female and the corresponding value will be F. That value just means that when we submit the form that's the actual value that gets sent to the back end. Okay and then we'll have male and M right there. Let's hit next and we'll give this a label called gender. Now we want to make this a required field so we're going to put in here must provide gender. Okay, so now that I've done that, I finish. And we can look at the resulting JSF source. So I'm going to click on my source tab right down there, and let's take a look at what this generated for us. So here we have our select one radio. The label says gender. The required message detail is what is rendered on the page in case the user failed to provide the gender and this is the unique ID, ID equals SOR1. Of course you can change that. And then we have our two static select items right in here. Let's now look at our design mode again. I don't like how it's uh, placed here vertically, so I'm going to make this horizontal. You'll see that I have my select one radio already selected. So we can look at our property inspector right here, and under layout you'll see that the default layout is vertical. We're going to change that to horizontal. Look how that looks a little bit nicer. So let's say that we wanted to store information about our customer in a managed bean. A managed bean is simply a Java bean that's registered with your ADF application. Well before we do that let's go ahead and add a couple more fields. I'm going to put a couple input text fields right here and um, I'll just drag that right above. For example, let's say in my panel header I want to uh, right click on here and say insert inside of and maybe I want to choose my ADF faces and grab my input text right here. I can do that and then I can rearrange things. So for example I can have the input text uh, one after the other. Okay, so what I'd like to do is provide a first name and a last name. So I'll just go in here and I'll make this label be first name and I'll make this label be last name. Now let's store that information in a managed bean so I'll right click on my view controller and I'll say general Java class and here I'll call this customer and I'm going to give three fields, one for first name, another for last name, and another for gender. Okay, so here we'll just say private string last, first, and gender. If I right click on my source, I can actually generate the accessors, the getters and setters. Okay, that's what we do with our beans. Now we're going to register that bean inside of this ADFC config.xml file. 
Okay, but before we do that, let's go to diagram view right here. Okay, so let's drag over this customer. We need to make sure that our JSP page is defined in our ADFC config file because in order for it to understand uh, or be aware of the managed beans, it has to be in there. Okay, so now we're going to go to our overview and this is where we define our managed beans. So under managed beans right here, let me scroll over a little bit, you'll see that there's this plus and we can call this bean anything we want to. I'll call this customer bean. We give the fully qualified class name so we can hit edit and drill down to it. So here's my com example view, there's my customer. And now it is registered. Going back to our JSP, now we hone in on this first name, scroll over a little bit so you can see the value. You'll see that the value is blank right now, but we can go to our expression builder and here's our ADF managed beans, here's our customer bean, and we're going to associate that with the first field. So notice how it automatically populated our expression language right there. Let's do the same thing for the last name. Okay, so um, really the easiest way to do this is copy this, paste it, and just tweak it a little bit. Okay, so we'll do the same thing for our gender. And now we have it. Now if you want to test that this actually works, we can just put an output text component on the page splashing out, let's say, the value of the gender. So we'll just say output text, put it right inside of this panel header after the select one radio, and for the value, let's just use our little wizard here. We'll use our expression builder and we'll have it splash out gender. Now one thing to be aware of is that it's not going to automatically submit. What you need to do is set the partial triggers attribute of our output to point to the ID of whatever component is issuing the submit. So under our select one radio, note that the ID for select one radio is SOR1. We're going to be referencing that in a minute. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that auto submit is turned on. So scroll down until you see auto submit. Okay, I already had it set to true. And then go to your output text, find the partial triggers, which is right here. Click on that. And here is our SOR1. Bring that over and boom, we're done. Okay, let's give this a whirl. Right click and run it. And here's our form. So let's go ahead and uh, enter in some information. And there, see how it's showing F down there? I click on mail and it displays M. So we know this is working. Thank you for watching this video tutorial. I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Visit us at www.fireboxtraining.com.